when the 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 stuff happened with Suge and Tupac that night, what was the the big thing that was going to happen? Because I know um, you were focused a lot on the club that night. What was the big um, uh, deal with that night as far as it pertains to the club? Yeah. So what was happening that night? What was the big thing? Was we were using someone else permit to open the club. I uh, forget the lady's name. But it was a lady, some officer people from New York that actually, Helen something, I, f I forget her name. But anyway, uh, we were using her uh, her permit and her license to operate the club. But she you know, had this guy, uh, this attorney that was working on getting it put in Suge's name. And so everything was looking good. Where they was like, if y'all have no problems tonight, and everything goes smooth, they're going to come in and do the inspections. and They're going to be there watching and checking y'all out. Y'all go, We're going to have y'all liquor license. And, you know, y'all y'all license premiere where it's going to be in Suge's name. Or, or or his female associate's name. I'm pretty sure it was Suge's name. But it's going to be, you know, a Suge entity. And, um, and so that's why it was like a big thing because, I'll be honest, every night... The three nights prior, it was chaotic there. It was hell, to be honest, uh, from a security standpoint, trying to get crowd control and get everybody accommodated. And so, you know, after one or two times, you learn from your mistakes. And so I, you know, I always, I, I of course I was always, I've never had a bodyguard Assignment. Everybody always say you were security, but no, I was always with you, making shit happen. I was really Shug's right hand in the streets, you know. And so I would be the go-to person. Where Shug at? Where can we go? When the car leaving? Where we at? You know, I was his go, the go-to guy for everything. And so I was making sure everything was was on point at the club for, for when they got there. So that's why I elected not to. Uh, Go and everybody always asks, well, if you had a ticket, what you did with the ticket? Man, goddamn. Yeah, I could have got him. After two bucks, sure. And whatever females with him, I would be the next one going in there over Buntry and any of them, right? But <laughs> one thing about Death Row, and anybody ever been with us? Shit was unorganized, man. It ain't like. This your ticket, this your ticket. Everybody had their own tickets and meet us at the fight. Man, it was like some sucker shit, really. Whoever, the first one's there, or whoever walking in with us get the, uh, get to go in. Got to be there. So I wasn't no, I ain't have to see no fight. You know, I'm out there working. I ain't out there playing or got to be seen and, and all of that. And so my job is to make sure shit running right. Or running smoothly. People always talk about, and so my point is, that's what I was doing. I went to I went to MGM, saw that shit was hectic and all that. Frank and, and Tupac, I'm gonna be honest, Tupac called cussing, going off. And that was the last thing Tupac ever said to me in life. He was in his room. Where should get red? Where should get? He always late. We always got to show up everywhere late. You know, I'm tired of this shit. Matter of fact, Ranch Till Sugar, I'll meet him over there. I'm catching the cab over there to the hotel. All right, Pop. You know, it's grown ass man. <laughs> okay. Him and Frank. I didn't know Kevin was with him. Kevin Hackey, but him and Frank took off and they rolled over there in a taxi cab from the Luxor Hotel, which is not that far, to the MGM Hotel by themselves. Of course, now she was at his house. Tupac and them was at the room at the Luxor. They get there. They meet up in the fight. Fight's over in what? Less than a minute, <laughs> two minutes, right? And then that's when y'all see them coming out, Pac all hyped up and feeling good. And, you know, y'all see the, the footage where he came out and feeling good and walking and all hyped up. And then they go and do whatever. Now, whew. 
Everybody always in the comment section. Why would Orlando be at the hotel at the at the MGO and, and, and in Vegas and he don't have a ticket to the fight? I understand why y'all say that. Cause your motherfuckers ain't never been to no Vegas on no fight night. Anybody that been to Vegas on a fight night that remember, y'all tell these motherfuckers. It was like All-Star Weekend. Bitches, every, every nigga that thought it from every city, from Detroit to Cleveland to, to Chicago, Atlanta, every gangster or nigga that thought they had some money, D-boy or whatever, was there in Vegas. Some had tickets, some didn't. And the MGM, the MGM was packed. And what they used to have was a line like this that led right into the place where bitches on this side, bitches on this side, and a few dudes in the, you know, among the crowd looking. Chicks trying to get pulled because they seen all these rich niggas walking through. Chicks just standing on the side, thirsty, thirsty, looking. Dudes walking and all that. Some got pulled on the way out. Some may have got pulled on the way in. But I can't even tell y'all how fight night was. Mike Tyson fights were in the 90s. Just people were there in the hotel just standing around, being there. It was just like a crowd of people just standing around. So yeah, people, you go to fight night in Vegas and don't have a ticket to the fight. But there was probably like four or five after parties that night. Everybody big was in town. For some reason, Biggie wasn't in town that night. Don't know, but probably because of the, the heat allegedly between uh, Death Row and Bad Boys and all that, and he elected not to go. But Foxy Brown, Von Zip was there, right? There were people out there. There were several, y'all Google it, look it up, at least 10 clubs. Club 662 wasn't the only club. It was a popular one for people that wanted to hang around Doll Pounds and Tupac and Shug and that, that atmosphere. But most people didn't want to be around them. If you want to keep it real, they wanted to go to the other spots that were inside the hotel and stuff. Nicer, nicer clubs, nicer casinos. Y'all, I can't explain to you, you youngsters, how it was in the 90s out there in Vegas, but it was, if a little y'all a little old, older, y'all can think of All-Star Weekend, 2000, what was it, seven? When they had the uh, NBA All-Star Weekend out there? Shit. How many of y'all were there in the comment session? How many of y'all actually went to the game? <laughs> but everybody was there. So, yeah, that's, that's was the atmosphere. That what was going on in Vegas, uh, September the sixth, nineteen ninety six.